What up, nerds, and welcome to another froggy episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode 488, recorded Tuesday, August 6th, 2024. Tonight, we're talking about a Patreon pick. This was chosen by your boy, Brandon. The movie is Frogman from 2024. Before we get into it, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, Calling in from Washington, D.C., we got your boy, Randeezy. What's up, man? Punk, you're a magic twanger, Froggy. <laughs> What's up, buddy? It's good to hear from you. Good to see you. Good to talk with you. Good to finally be done with some work for a few hours. It's hey, great. It's does, great to be here. Uh, in, in context of that bump you just played, does the frog have a boner? <laughs> I, I'm going to assume always yes uh frogs are weird little freaks uh that's their nature's freak no and, for their erections you know they, they come they come ready to bone they come down to you clown know, a lot of cranking going on in frog circles there's there's a lot of really uh, kind of bizarre um family heirlooms in my family one of them is if you can believe it a porcelain frog with a huge erection rob I've never heard anything I've believed more in my entire life, if I'm being honest with you. I uh, can't eat my grandpa, passed it down to my dad, and it one day will become mine. Um, juice is out for the week. However, we do have a returning guest to the cast. Uh, everybody, welcome back our good buddy, Jim G, baby. What's up, man? Yo. What's what's up, gang? Thanks for having me back. Appreciate it. So you got a fro? You just got a huge froner. That's yeah. your birthright now to pass down. Yeah, I think it was actually a collection. There was like multiple sizes of them, and they had like a just a just a giant erection. Yeah, I don't know why. I can't. I can't. Explain. They call it the toadstool. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. There That's hilarious, and also like. I don't need to know where it came from. I don't need the Antiques Roadshow on that. I need it to be primely placed on your mantle <laughs> so that the entire world can enjoy. You need to em- embrace heritage, Bob. Re- my, my grandpa... Reject modernity. Embrace tradition. <laughs> he he would keep it in his office. Um, he had this like big bookcase behind him with a bunch of knickknacks and stuff like that. But he would keep it like with the erection face towards the wall so you wouldn't be, you know throwing off when he walked in but we all knew be prepared to be bedazzled we all knew <laughs> we all... all right well, this, uh, this is a hey, fruitful Jim. <laughs> tangent yeah uh thanks for sitting in with us yet again dude it's always fucking cool having you on uh, but for listeners that maybe are unfamiliar with you and your show why don't you let them know what it is and where they can find it yeah totally um so yeah, I have a show called uh, Waxing the Porpoise. Uh, it's a podcast featuring myself and my good friend Steve, who has seen like zero movies in his life. So I make him watch stuff so we can talk about it. Uh, and occasionally we'll throw in some stuff that you know could be ripped right out of an episode of Unsolved Mysteries, uh, high strangeness kind of stuff. Uh, or we'll just have someone with a fun backstory, like like Steve's dad, who used to be a C- Secret Service agent. So yeah. Check us out anywhere you get podcasts. Have you heard of our podcast? Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard? That bump is evergreen. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, Waxing the Porpoise is a good listen. It's a good sit. Check it out for sure. Uh, shouts outs to uh, the Coors Light Chronicles. Some uh, Dick highlights Dog. there. Yeah, with your buddy Dick Dog. Good shit. Definitely good shit. Dick Dog, oh, my boy. He's just a sweetheart of a man. He is. <laughs> he, well, I don't know him, but he seems very kind. Um. Before we get into the main event, folks, let's tackle just a little bit of housekeeping real quick here. Um, it's a new month, so we got a new poll, and we got a poll that just closed. The uh, the August poll, which was a Del Toro spotlight, turns out the winner is indeed Pan's Labyrinth, so we're going to be talking about that very soon. 
the September the September poll is themed movie magic. We got three movies that literally and metaphorically play around with some movie magic. Uh, they are The Final Girls, Popcorn, and Matinee. Whoa, Bob, whoa. How are those numbers How looking, those Bob? How those numbers look? <laughs> <laughs> looking, Bob? <laughs> well, Justin, thanks for asking. Uh, we actually got a dead heat for first place currently. Uh, it is tied. Odd shit. With uh, 37% of the votes tied uh, the final girls and matinee. Oh, I'm sorry. Popcorn, not matinee. And uh, matinee is in last place with 26% of the vote. That's still competitive, though. It is. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Man. Now we're talking. Now we're in the weeds with this shit. I love it. I'm pretty torn between that because all three are very appealing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, th- I know we've been wanting to do popcorn for a while. Um, matinee has been on like my back burner for a while. And uh, the final girls is a fun one. I haven't seen it since it came out, but it's uh, I remember it yeah. being a, a fun little meta slasher kind of thing. Yeah. We, yeah. We that's... covered that a while back and uh, that's one of my wife's favorite horror films for sure. Nice. It's, it's pretty, it's really fun. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great one. Like they're all good. Like that's I'm, I'm yeah, they're very very different. Very very different movies. <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. psyched about how competitive they are with each other. Yeah. It's a tight race. Uh make sure you get your votes in before the end of the month and we'll see what we're talking about this September. We are still dropping mini casts every other Friday. We just dropped one on Sting. Uh coming up next Friday the 16th of August. We're going to be dropping a review on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Uh, Don't touch that dial. You need to hear this. You need to hear this. This is your boy Bob on this one. Um, just bitching, if I'm being honest. Just a bitch fest. So, if you There's want There's a big that, market for that sort of content. It's, so. <laughs> it's coming at you hot and heavy. Uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire dropping the 16th and... I think we're going to do another Joe Bob watch party on the 16th too. This is, I think he's just got two more. um, Well, he's got one, one off, which is the 16th. And then they're closing out the season with like an all nighter, like a six movie marathon, which God knows I won't be able to be able to stay awake for that. Um, (laughs) But uh, make it an hour. I know dude. The first movie is, is usually a slam dunk. And after that, I'm, I'm, you know, night, night, the past couple I had to punk out on because of work related situations, but we're going to try and do one on the 16th. So mark your calendars. I'll, I'll send a link out just before 9 PM Eastern. If you want to join in on the watch party, um, just click on that zoom link and join in on the fun. Oh, <laughs> what a punk punk ass bitch <laughs> working for the man like a loser. Just like watching people off. drop like flies on the chat during joe bob of just like well these are all working people and they are slowly but surely disappearing not nogging not logging off just disappearing yeah. it's good it's fun sliding out of the dms um that's mm-hmm. all i got randy you have anything you need to plug um aside from my recent appearance on uh plug it up podcast with our pal caitlin um for uh, i saw the tv glow i mentioned that last week that is still available. Plug it up. Plug it up. Podcast anywhere that you listen to your podcasts. Um, other than that, um, I'm, I'm my house is pretty clean. I think and that's it for you, huh? Yeah, I'm done. Jim, you got anything else you want to throw out there? We just did long legs. Jumped on the uh, the old bandwagon. Get some of that long legs juice. Ooh. If you want to check that out, mm. hear some idiots talk so- about it. <laughs> <laughs> I did listen. Hey, they come to us it. for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, it was, it was a, an interesting conversation. Um, definitely, I basically agreed with everything you guys said, but it was like, it was, you know, uh, different shades of gray as far as your opinions went. They were all sort of in the middle-ish, I guess I would say, but yeah, yeah, that movie's, uh, I don't know. I want to watch it again and like kind of solidify my thoughts, but it's, a, it's okay. I, I do know? too. It's one I'm not going to give up on because there's a lot, I think there's a lot in the background and yeah time to let it sink in yeah i think even as people like sorry go ahead i was gonna say i want to do a double header with that and black coat's daughter really bad oh yeah i don't i don't have the patience for that much (laughs) that much oz Um, that's a lot of slow burn jam together yeah i was not the world's biggest 
Black Coat's daughter fan. Anyway, yeah. this sounds like a clean house to me. Yep. This house is clean. All right, let's get into the main event. We are talking about Frog Mang. And we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? Box. Oh, box. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Justin. Show I don't have, me your box. I don't Bob. have this box. I don't think you can buy it. I don't. I haven't seen it anywhere. Uh, maybe I'm fucking crazy. idiot. <laughs> it's probably on VHS somewhere, like Walmart. Jeez, it uh, probably is. Yeah, that's <laughs> like yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is a this is a new release. This is currently on Screambox, the bloody disgusting. Uh, streaming horror streaming service or you can just rent it basically anywhere um, I think it was like a four dollar rental on Amazon that's where I watched it at uh, runtime of an hour and 17 minutes this was written and directed by Anthony Cousins and I I believe this was his feature length debut he made a bunch of shorts before this um, some of them were featured in the scare package movies that are on shutter those mm-hmm. anthology films Mm-hmm. And it stars Nathan Timashuk, Benny Barrett, Ali Daniels, some other folks, maybe some frogs. I don't know. We'll get into it. <laughs> maybe Pl- some frogs. Plot synopsis brought to you by IMDb is as follows. Three friends in search of the Loveland Frogman find out that he is more than just a local legend. Boys, have we seen this movie before and would you recommend folks check it out? Jim, why don't you kick us off, man? Uh, I had not seen this before. It's pretty new. Uh, I'm going to... It might change with this review, but right out of the gate, I think I would not recommend uh, outside of you know found footage aficionados or creature feature, people big on practical effects. Um, and I think anyone that's like indifferent to to found footage this one might just push you over the edge into like okay i hate found footage now <laughs> so you're gonna sh- fucking sh- <laughs> go running naked through a fucking strip mall because of this fuck movie found footage yeah fuck it god damn it <laughs> fuck this fucking frog yeah <laughs> cool randy what about you now, this was i had never even heard the name before this is very very unknown to me um and I did enjoy it. I, I definitely would recommend it to found footage types such as myself. Um, cryptid types, even, um, I would say. We'd cryptid get something nuts. out of this for sure. Cryptid nuts. Those who are nuts for cryptids. Um, yeah, I think that's a... I don't know. Like I, I, like, I think it's got some good legs on it. If you are not at all... If you have no proclivity towards found footage at all, or if you are just like anti-found footage, I think, I think you won't have a good time with this. But... I don't know. I feel like it's more accessible than it sounds like Jim does. Um, so, yeah. G- generally recommend, yeah. Cool. Rob? Oh, hey. I, I think I'm a little more in Jim's camp on this one. I am sort of... not like I don't like hate found footage or anything like that, but I kind of am somewhat indifferent to it. And this this movie is okay. Um if you're if you love found footage, I think you'll definitely get something out of this. But yeah, if you're if you're a little more indifferent to the subgenre, I don't know, you could probably skip it. But it is like hella, hella, hella short. Um, seventy seven minutes, which is nice. That's really nice. <laughs> Real big fan it's of that. Tight. So overall sounds sort of like a very weak recommendation, but um we'll get into it. The Lucas. Your your editorializing yeah. about the level of recommendation is always wrong. Always wrong. <laughs> I'm um, trying. That was that was a <laughs> to slam them to together. Yeah, yeah, we got two. You weight your own heavier. You do. We you got, do it. We you got do two it. QCHs and one full Ch. So you got one full Ch. Point <laughs> three eight. <laughs> right. Ch. That's. I Big mean, Michael that's, Che fans around here. That's a, that you're failing. That's an F. So I mean, really, I think I'm, I'm doing the film a favor here, Randy. Grading on a <laughs> curve. Bullshit. Luck. So yeah, we're gonna spoil the shit out of Frogman, and here comes your warning. Spoiler warning. Bob, 
You, <laughs> you got the plop synopsis. <laughs> That motherfucker wow. asks me a lot of questions on this yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now realizing. Uh, yeah, I do, Justin. Thanks for asking. I've got the entire <laughs> plot synopsis for Frogman typed out. And there's actually, even though this is a fairly short movie, there's a decent amount of shit that happens in it. Uh, so I'll try mm-hmm. and get through this quickly, uh, gentlemen. Oh, Frogman's getting busy in this thing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of Frogman in this. Uh, here let's uh let's get into it here so the kyle family they go on vacation they make a pit stop in a town called loveland back in 1999 they pull over to look at a map a physical map and young dallas plays with a handicam he accidentally captures footage of a humanoid frog creature in the woods the movie then jumps to present day and we see adult kyle um dallas kyle rather watching you a youtube personality by the name of jeremy J. he calls his frogman footage fraudulent Jeremy J. also breaks down the lore of Frogman for us, which involves a four-foot-tall bipedal frog creature that has a magic wand and potentially telepathic powers. Your boy Dallas, now having a degree in filmmaking, confesses to the camera he's going to return to Loveland and capture some irrefutable Frogman footage. Dallas asks his best friend and cameraman, Scotty, to operate the same camera he used to capture the original footage back in 99 and help him make his movie. Scotty isn't really into it, but finally agrees to go along. The two friends attend a going away party before Amy, who is Dallas's best female friend, whom he recently did hook up with, which led to his girlfriend dumping his ass. Amy is a, an actress and she's moving to LA and attempts to further her career. Through some awkward drunken conversation, Amy also agrees to go along on the trip. She even develops a sort of tongue in cheek character named Norma Jean Wynette, who's writing a country western album about Frogman. The three travel to Loveland. They stay at an inn run by an elderly woman named Gretel. She tells them to go to Frogman Point to see the elusive creature. They interview several locals on the street who say Frogman fucks. He can also get inside your head and maybe there's a cult that worships him. They drive out to the point and Dallas chases the Frogman down, tackles the shit out of him. Turns out to just be a local wearing a mask. He's hired to dress up and spook tourists. They go back to the inn and tell Gretel they know it's all a hoax and she's full of shit. She tells them they need to leave town. A cop then pulls them over and says they gotta pack their shit up and get the fuck out of town. Dallas agrees to leave, but only after he interviews George Hale, who is a local and the only other known person to ever capture Frogman footage. He took a picture of him back in 1975. They go to his house, and he agrees to an interview, but it runs very short when they ask him about people worshiping Frogman. However, he then gives them some sort of map that's going to lead them straight to Frogman. So they follow that map, and along the way, Scotty tells Dallas that he needs to confess his true feelings for Amy before she ends up leaving town, and he doesn't have a chance to do so. Um, they then set up camp in the middle of the woods near some green slime they find. Dallas blows a frogman flute that he got from a tourist shop in town and all the frogs start <laughs> croaking. Amy goes to get firewood. She's been gone for an hour and when the boys find her, she appears to be in a trance. They snap her out of it and she says she could hear someone calling her name in her head. Frogman appears and they haul ass. Scotty gets slime all over his face. They end up leaving the woods and returning to the inn. Um, they hear some spooky chanting and open a door that leads down a creepy tunnel into an underground cave. They witness a cult performing a marriage ceremony between a girl they kidnapped and Frogman. Ethel, the inn owner, is officiating. Before the ceremony is complete, George Hale reveals himself as one of the masked cult members and starts blasting a shotgun in the air. The woman turns out to be his granddaughter, and he's trying to save her ass. Another cult member's mask falls off. Looks like he's turning into a frog. Scotty's also looking pretty froggy. Um, The squad haul ass. We're just normal men. (laughs) <laughs> Dallas takes the opportunity to confess his love to Amy finally. They then find a huge sack and cut it open and there's a pregnant lady inside who gives birth to a fucking frog child. Then Frogman uses his telepathy to hop inside of Amy's brain. The camera goes kind of nuts and we see a mishmash of previous footage from the film. Dallas finds the Frogman wand and snaps her out of it. George finds them and escorts them out of the cave. He goes back in after his granddaughter. Amy has a full-blown breakdown and the screen goes black. We then see a, a string of text 
that says the authorities never taken the footage seriously and that Scotty, George, and his granddaughter were never seen again. It's been a full year and Dallas and Amy have had zero communication. We then see a screening of Dallas's finished Frogman documentary conclude at some sort of festival. To the roar of applause, an announcer invites Dallas to come on stage for a Q&A and he sits backstage quietly contemplating and not moving at all. The credits then start to roll, which are interrupted by a mid credit sequence where we see Dallas backstage yet again and he slowly pulls the Frogman wand out of his jacket and it lights up roll the rest of the credits there you go boys he's a frogman minutes there's a lot of shit a lot of that shit. is a lot of shit for that that, that run time yeah we'll although i would like argue that. fuck a lot <laughs> i would argue a lot of it is is pretty fluffy around the there's edges a lot of filler um, in this yeah yeah for sure yeah there's just like a lot of lore a lot of lore going in they're establishing a lot yeah jim what um, how do you feel about this what how did frogman tickle your butt what happened <laughs> Yeah, I got straight froggy style with him. Now, uh, it's this. This might be one that kind of evolves as we talk about it because I think uh, I'm right on the fence, like fifty fifty on it. Um, I think my biggest complaint out of the gate is there is so much cliche cheese dick <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> the first forty minutes, I was like, yeah. "This is so weak." Like the characters feel like NPCs. I feel like they could like, yeah, I know you have a small budget. It's indie. I feel like the relationship building, like the characters could have been tightened up like a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. It really doesn't pick up, but when it does, like I love the practical effects. I'm a big fan of that kind of thing. Creature stuff, cryptids. Like, I mean, this I've seen it too. It's like it very, it very much felt like uh, hail Ratma. It felt, Totally, yeah. <laughs> More like a vignette, like a, a chapter in an anthology, if, if it would have been shortened up to that, or like a really well done short that just Whoa. like streamline it. Um, 77 minutes is too long for you, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing. It felt fucking way longer. It feels kind of long, yeah. I agree. I totally it felt like agree. a slog. I think that has a lot to do with just how many beats there are, like more than it does anything else, but yeah. I wonder so. if it was supposed to be a short because this guy had made so many shorts before. Maybe this was one in in the queue, and then he got you know a few extra bucks or you know a green light to make a feature, and he tried to try to stretch it out a little bit because it feels the beginning feels like so like they're they're just extending these things like when they're doing the interviews on the street they talk to some ice cream lady the Norma the, the entire like Norma Jean Wynette character. Just feel, and mm-hmm. the, even the um the like love story of this movie like I f- I forgot that he <laughs> had feelings uh for for Amy until like he started confessing his love in the cave and I was like oh yeah that's a that's a thing in this movie like I just, yeah. it just doesn't seem important really to the plot at all yeah I would I would generally like kind of agree with some of that like I I don't know like p- part of me is feels like. The movie needs something besides Frogman lore and the the drama around that to to give us something to like invest ourselves in with these characters. I I see what it's attempting to do. The characters themselves are are pretty stock, um, I would say. But I don't know. I think the per, the performances of those characters are are are, are br- bring some some unique charisma to some of it. Like um, the woman. Uh, playing the what? What's her name? Like the uh, what is her name? Amy. 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 Yeah, Amy. I feel like was uh like a very very big big personality, big theater kid thing going on, and I thought that added to it. The thing about it is like uh, Scotty as like sort of like the quiet one. He's the one that you get the most fleshed out. He's the centerpiece of this movie, and I really really like this idea that he's just this dude like hard down on his luck in almost every way. Who's just like his whole reason for doing anything. Everything, everything, everything else aside, the only thing that he wants in this world is to prove to some fucking YouTubers <laughs> that he's not full of shit. And I'm like, that's the most relatably fucking lame th- motivation I can imagine. Like just getting so worked up about some fucking idiot on the internet that you like put everything that you have whatever you do have at r- insane risk is <laughs> just like man it's that speaks to a moment in time doesn't it <laughs> it does kind of feel like it's all he's got going for him because he's living with i think his 
brother and his brother's wife, and he's been there for a couple years. He's got his degree. It's his sister and his, her oh, husband. Maybe that's the one yeah. who was at the. Th- and yeah. his girlfriend just dumped his ass. He, I don't think he's really got a job, or he just doesn't really have much going on. So like he's trying to, I don't know, work on this Frogman doc because it's kind of all he's got, mm-hmm. I guess, going for him, which creates a kind of sympathetic character, I guess. But I didn't feel super invested in most of the characters really? in, in this movie, really. But I think I don't know, but like the biggest, the biggest kind of ding i guess i have with this movie is like how fucking similar it is within the first 45 minutes or so to the blair witch project like the setup of it with them like going to this little town that's got like a local legend and they're trying to interview the locals about the legend and they go into the woods and get lost and then see spooky things but i will give this movie some credit in in in, in one way, like it does fully give you that sweet, hot frog man action. Whereas like the Blair Witch really lets your imagination do the heavy lifting. This is frog man mm-hmm. is all up in your ass, which I think it needed. Dude, it. Frog- <laughs> See, here's the thing. This is the thing that I think separates it from Blair Witch and whatever. Like, yes, it plays a lot with similar tropes or whatever, but this movie to me immediately, I thought this movie was like, right on the edge of a horror comedy. I'm not sure that I would go as far as to say it's not comedy forward necessarily, but like these characters, like there's one liners, there's little like it's, it's damn near a comedy in its own right. So like the idea that they're pursuing a a local legend and doing all this stuff, but it's to the end of the fucking frog man and not a bunch of kids who disappeared or whatever. Like it's about a fucking frog man like, it's so silly on its face who holds a wand like it's so fucking <laughs> stupid and this guy is desperate desperate to prove it's real just to validate the one thing that he had left in his life of value to the point where he sacrifices what like he burned basically burns his bridge with between him and amy who's the only person that he like i guess they're good friends him and dallas and amy they're all good friends or whatever but like he's in love with Amy and he's like been pining after her. He could have a relationship with her. That's the will they won't they of the movie. But by the end, she's like fucking traumatized beyond belief. And it's all because he had to go prove his point. And the thing that he says to her in those final moments is like the most telling shit in the world where he's like, don't worry. I can't remember exactly what he said. He's like, but don't worry. We have it on camera. No one can refute this now as if she gives a shit. Like she almost got fucking like, impregnated by a fucking toad what are you talking about you fucking (laughs) idiot this is the woman you love and you're reassuring her that you are proven right congratulations dickhead like that's how i watch this whole movie is this like completely misguided dork who like granted was right that there's a thing and that he has this thing going on like that that is real and in fairness he has a right to be upset when people don't take him seriously but he then pursues it to the destruction of his own and many uh, and the people he loves lives out of just like dogged fucking repugnant self like egotism. He drowns in his own egotism. I love that. And I love that they use a very fucking stupid creature idea cryptid as the centerpiece for that. The fucking flute, like all this shit is so silly and like a very funny way to me. Yeah. yeah I mean, Sometimes it tries friends. to be funny too, and I don't know that I always think it's funny when it's a trying, like trying to be like like the one liners aren't always funny. But I think like the situation itself is just like kind of hilarious. I'm sorry, G baby. Okay, yeah. No, it, I was just saying to your point, like uh, about Amy. Yeah, she's been traumatized and all this. But I got the footage. It's like also your fucking friend just turned into a half a fucking frog man and disappeared. <laughs> you don't give it. That's the first thing you're saying is like I got it on film though. It's like don't worry. It's all good. Yeah. It like, bothers I understand wanting to console somebody in a traumatic moment, but Jesus Christ, like yeah. she's having you watched your friend Dallas turn into a fucking a, a, a wart. Like he just turned into a human yeah. wart. A Some, human wart. Something that really like didn't make sense to me and I know like it's a choice because it helps hide some flaws, but this guy, this character wants to capture like clear irrefutable footage of the frogman, and he chooses to use this camera the same camera he had in 1999 like yeah. why that does it just doesn't make sense for this character to do yeah. that i don't know the only thing really? i could think was he was really yeah. hard on his luck and he's staying in his sister's True. house yeah like yeah. maybe he's just 
that much of a broke ass that he's like yeah yeah he's on a real shoe string I think it's that, but also like there's like he romanticizes this shit. And to, like to me, it's like factor. Yeah. Like I, I think that like he's not just filming with that. He's also filming with his phone or whatever, which I guess is a truly viable thing to some degree now. Um, but like and I think he had there might have been another camera in the mix, too. But like he's getting other sh- footage. But I, I understand like a the impulse to make it like romanticize it a little bit. And be like we're going to get on the same fucking camera. Goddamn right. And then also, yeah, he's he's got nothing else like he's got whatever he's got he's using because he has like cameraman uh, buddy would have a camera that he could use i I feel like he was i feel like there were multiple camera angles throughout the movie i'm pretty sure it was just the shitty camera he did have his phone for sure but i don't think we ever like saw the vantage point of his phone i think it was just the old like mini dv camera from 99 yeah, Amy wow. uses her phone because she ex- explicitly says towards the end, I'm at 1%. <laughs> I was like, I don't buy that either. You don't Maybe. buy that? That's the most realistic shit in the world. <laughs> I feel like, like you would start conserving battery at yeah. 33%. Yeah, in that I, kind I of a feel situation. like if that were- like, I only have 1% left in pursuit of Frogman. No way. True. I don't know, man. I don't see why not. People who get de- like, people do not. Like, I'm a stick charge their phones responsibly. I am too, but like I'm not I'm not on this like and the thing is like she <laughs> and and Dallas I don't think take this all that seriously. They know he does That's and fair. so they're there for him on it and yeah, yeah. it's really but it's really about the trip for them. That's a and good I don't, point. Like, yeah. At a certain point, like with the cop shows up and says, You need to get the fuck out of town and he's like, No, we gotta go interview this guy. Like they're kind of held captive to some degree yeah, by this guy. Are. So I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't have any issue with that at all myself. Something, also quick quick uh, point of order. I think you have Dallas and Scotty reversed. Dallas is our protagonist and Scotty is the cameraman. Do I? Right? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm good, sorry. I got good the next call, Jim. Up Okay. Something I thought was really funny and maybe I'm reading into it, but it's it seemed like all the folks in this movie are really like projecting onto Frogman. Like they just really they really want Frogman to fuck. They talk about like him <laughs> impregnating women and like how he can get it in, and it's, it's just a very seems, sexualized script. It is <laughs> like, and then like, who knows if that's what he wants? But all these humans are doing this like marriage ceremony so he can get his fuck on with this other broad, and like, it's about him just fucking, and it's. I don't know, man. It's like kind of hilarious in that That's way. What I think it is, but it's fucking. <laughs> it's like silly and bizarre and strange. Like this is this is a few like uh, tonal shifts away from being a fucking trauma movie. This is insane. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like, it, I, 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 an elevated trauma flick. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Like, like, like the sexuality of it, like it's also that they can have like the hybrid spore baby eggs and shit like which is it, like truly genuinely pretty grotesque and i liked the effects in this movie by the way as a, i did too like, yeah same like yeah. the only thing i didn't like was brutal that wand man there's it's nothing but silly and when he pulled that out in the mid credit sequence i really kind of hated that i was like okay this i don't yeah. know what this is what this is supposed to imply about what happens next is is he a frog man in his brain like turn the audience into a bunch he of just frogs? like gonna show this yeah because if he has fucking magic on his side <laughs> that's all the proof you need you don't need to like fucking magic. show footage you could just be like hey look what i can fucking do i can turn somebody into my 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 spore slave by waving the sparkler at them do you think and it, they have no choice but to follow and stand there for hours like do you think it's you a got magic more than wand, a fucking like, footage on your body? Does it vibrate? Is it a sex toy too? Because Frogman fucks so hard. Oh, it, it, I mean, it is. It's not outside the realm of possibility. We know. We all and know. Normally, I don't think those things actually shoot sparks, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> who am I to judge? If you use them right, Randy. His Patronus is a frog <laughs> <guess> so. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I like yeah. I like the the, oh, the effects yeah. in this too though that that fucking tongue, you know what I'm saying? Like ladies like that frog tongue. <laughs> the the frog baby <laughs> birth scene was pretty cool, the green slime shit. Brutal. 
the the look of the Colts, like when the dude's like hood falls and you see his frog fucking face, like that was solid. Dude, I laughed mm-hmm. out fucking frog loud at that fucking part face. when he just when he peers <laughs> over that ledge and the, and the head comes out. He's all like See? that shit, dude. dude I laughed. The thing so about hard. The, that was that awesome. cult thing. Like, I, like I I really think that like that. I don't know. I'm I'm a little torn on it, but I like it in general because. It gave hot fuzz vibes to me. It was it was not a serious cult to me. It was not <laughs> it like did, like yeah. if I watch um I don't know, I don't want to spoil that movie. But like there's movies with cults in them or whatever, like they're supposed to be taken seriously, but it's hard to take them seriously and you just kind of groan and roll your eyes and you think, "Okay, well, it's another movie cult. They're black robes and sp- singing boogity boogity around a, a campfire or whatever." And they basically do that, but it's around a frog. It's just inherently goddamn silly, and it makes me laugh. I wish that they were a little bit heavier-handed with the laughs there, but I understand that they're they're also trying to make this legitimate horror in 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 a, in a number of ways. Um, the effects uh, being chief among them, but I don't know. I, I it, I think this movie splits the difference kind of nicely, at least for my money. If it went on any longer, I wouldn't probably feel as strong as positive towards it. I think it's the perfect length. Um, Maybe a, I mean shorter. I I could imagine it being a little shorter, sure. But I'm happy with what we got because the, all the for the most part, all of the like conversations and stuff, all the build up or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of by the numbers or whatever. But it's just so fucking stupid. And there, it's not like in Blair Witch. It's like people walking around arguing about like just lost map or whatever. And, and like there's attention to that to me. But I can understand why people would find that to be fucking annoying and pointless. Yeah, this is a, like, it wasn't funny. I think though. this adds it, on that. I think That's if they were if they were trying to be funny in the first half of this movie, it didn't come off that way to me. I I was taking it. It felt kind of dry. So I don't think I was ready when the super goofy stuff happened, and I was still in like. This is a more serious found footage flick. I don't know. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh, that was kind of funny. Like, I just, I don't think I was ready for the goofiness, but maybe my expectations were just wrong. You know, I don't, how did, how did I, I don't know. Like, I, how did that sit oh, with you, Jim? Like, did you, did you get the laughs in the beginning or did it feel kind of stilted? No, not at all. Yeah. It felt like a fucking UPN, like WB kind of like just terrible like I didn't, I didn't buy these characters and their like their banter. I didn't get any humor out of the first 35, 40 minutes. And I don't wish it was shorter. I just wish that the first 40 minutes, if that's the route they're going to take was just better or they extended mm-hmm. like the third act shit kind of peel, pull back on that, you know, yeah. come in with that yeah. like 20 minutes earlier, play up the cult stuff a little bit more, the town, um, which I felt that that was a little rote too. I mean, I, it felt kind of like a mishmash of like the Ratma, like as above, so below hot fuzz. Good mm-hmm. example. I just like, I liked the, the last act, the silliness for me. I think all of this, it was like, be more that be more silly and grotesque and, and gross. And I still can't just get over like the first 30 or 40 minutes. It just felt like these characters are garbage like especially the guy <laughs> the main dude dallas he really reminded me of the main filmmaker dude from butterfly kisses that guy was an insufferable fucking bastard too like <laughs> i just couldn't stand him and i couldn't stand this dallas guy either i feel like they could have well, i think that's what's way I, that's what i like about like i didn't like dallas as a person either and it's because he was like so single-minded and and shitty to his friends and like unable to confront his station like this is all like to assuage his ego that's the whole thing is about his ego and like so from the beginning i was automatically like not i wasn't completely against him because he's still the protagonist but i was like not necessarily rooting for this guy i'm kind of rooting for his friends to some degree to like get out alive basically just knowing what generally what's coming and like i don't know as, as far as the tone goes as soon as you see that YouTuber guy at the very fucking beginning. Bullshit. I just kind of had, I just like, I immediately was like, yeah, this is, this is a sillier movie. Like between the name, yeah. the premise and that I'm just like, yeah, I, you can't take this shit too I guess, seriously. I, guess that's I, I agree me. though, that it should be yeah. a little funnier. It, yeah. In the, something in parts to sort of sell that, that. Uh, av- after the movie ended, I was thinking about was the soundtrack. And I think that really sort of helps, 
uh, helps the argument that, that it is supposed to be a little more funny because it's got this like very low, like um, uh, Gregorian chant kind of thing happening, but it's like ribbits, like fucking frog mm-hmm. ribbits is what it kind of <laughs> sounds like. And I like, I don't know, I did, it's sort of, it was like background noise when the movie was on, but after it ended, I was like, man, that's so fucking goofy. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think it, it was intended to be that. Um, but it, I don't know, like I feel, this movie reminds me in some ways of Deadstream because of like the, the YouTuber at the beginning. When this breaks for, format, I think I like it the most. Like when we see the YouTuber at the beginning and then at the end when he's at the, the screening, it feels fresh. It doesn't feel quite as like, Blair Witch copy paste. It, it feels more interesting to me when it sort of does that. I wish there was a little bit more of that. Like maybe we did get some camera or some cell phone uh, camera footage or something. But also like the tone in Deadstream. I'm going to wax Dead, Deadstream's car for a second. The tone in, mm. in that movie is like so immediately solidified right out the gate. You know, this guy is not a not a really likable protagonist. He's a slave to the YouTube and he's just doing doing this haunted house shit to get his numbers back up because he is a, he is an asshole and he got found out for being an asshole. So like, but it's so goofy. You kind of roll with him. But like this, this movie just doesn't start goofy enough. I, I don't think not for me anyways. Well, I think it's trying to walk the line and like to me, it walks the line just fine. I don't I like that. It doesn't I like that. It allows me to have some some cool horror moments and some like just patently absurd bullshit all in the same package. It works nicely for me. I don't know. It's the, I, the, the if I come into this movie trying to take it like very seriously, like it was the Blair Witch then I would probably agree with you. But I like, I was just immediately, I was immediately put into that zone. where I'm like, okay, this isn't that serious. This is there. They, they can play with tropes all they want because it's like maybe a little bit of a dissection of that stuff and not, at least it's not taking itself all that seriously. I don't think except in the moments where it actually succeeds at, at doing things that are serious, like seriously good gore or seriously, you know, like, I don't know. I I loved like things. That, it's just so fucking. So they they beat the shit out of a guy in a plastic fucking <laughs> frog mask. Like I, it's just so goddamn silly, and I enjoy it. Like I, I don't know. I I don't know how else to put it. That it's, reminded me of the scene in Happy Gilmore where he's like, "Where are you going with those clubs, punk?" And he just knocks that dude over, and he's like, "Oh shit, I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> Gilmore, I'm your caddy." Yeah, it's just some poor yeah. fucking townie that's just like, yeah, they made me come out here for tourism to get people in here and stuff. But I don't know. I guess I wasn't taking it too seriously either. I just think the quality level, like I don't mind hating a guy. Like I think Deadstream is a good mm-hmm. pull. Like that's an example of someone like, yeah, this guy's a fucking cheese ball, but he was funny and he had like an energy to him. I just feel like this guy, Dallas was just like, I felt he was so pathetic and mm-hmm. they just played him like, I don't know. Like, like I said, I felt like a, like an old, like a WB show. Like I, I just felt like if you're indie and you're going into this, like bootstrapping and like, those are the kinds of things you have control over, you know, like be witty or, you know, just make that quality better. And like the practical effects, like the, I commend it for the things it was able to do on a shoestring Mm -hmm. towards the end. And I I just wish they kind of would have leaned into let's be a little bit more silly with it and give me a little bit more of that practical stuff instead of lingering on and like this weird relationship. Also him and Amy, I was really confused at one point too about their past. And he, mm-hmm. cause when he's talking about, yeah, I just broke up with someone. I figured it was her, but then there's a point where it's like, I think it was someone else. And this is mm-hmm. Amy is just yet another girl that he had dated in the past or had always wanted to get with their relationship. What was, it could have just been me like the, in the mode I was, that in was watching it. I, I was the same. I was confused for a while. Yeah. I was a little confused, but mostly that was just like, that was the most forgettable part. And I feel like it felt tacked on because I'm sure yeah. it was both for like, but I also like, that's what I was saying earlier is like, I kind of, don't fault them for wanting something besides the lore and the the yeah, totally. you know the main story to go on. It just what it didn't play that well. It was a little confusing at first, and by the end, I'm just like, what is what are they? What does she see in him at all? Like, what are they seeing each other? They seem to be completely. I I don't know. I like him as a brooding dickhead who is mostly humorless because he's so single minded or whatever. 
I don't know. I think that's a nice change from something like a dead stream. It's not overly broad, um, but it's arguably, yeah, maybe a little dull and a, a little harder to read. I think there's probably a, a little bit more they could have done to make that, to push that tone home. But I don't know. I feel like it's just, it's tough. It's a tough job to try and straddle that line without yeah. losing the plot on uh, on the shit that you're spending your money on, which is effects and shit. Like you don't want to. How did how did the uh, the telepathic frogman stuff sit with you guys? Did that do anything for you? I kind of I, li- I liked the effect on the camera that it mm-hmm. did, but I felt like that's something they could have played into or had another wrinkle to that a little bit more. Um, I, I thought that was a good like gimmick or tactic on a shoestring kind of budget was to like, mm-hmm, they did yeah. like an, a color inversion and they made things kind of weird and how they like whited out her eyes. And she's like in that trance. Like, I, I really like that. I, f- I feel like they could have added like another gimmick in his tool bag to fuck with him. I thought that would have been cool, but I mean, overall, I, I think it was, it was a fun wrinkle, although it does like make me think of, you know, Blair Witch, how like there's like time loops and she can fuck with like the land. It made me think of that, but it wasn't so like one for one that it made me think, oh, this is ripping Blair Witch. I, I generally liked it. I just wish they could have done just stepped into it a little bit more. I Yeah, I basically yeah. copy paste that opinion. It made me think of. You know, we reviewed the Mothman prophecy somewhat recently. Another cryptid, like getting in your mind, um, reading your thoughts. I like that. I, it makes a, a cryptid feel more scary. I think. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I generally did enjoy that they they went that route with the frog mang. Um, I looks- thought this is the perfect t- like kind of like kind of cryptid. Like it's just such a silly again. It's silly enough to where that being just kind kind of so like Indrid cold and all that shit and mothman was so silly to me as to (laughs) like it it undercut the scares because the movie was not trying to be funny in any way so to me this is like the perfect kind of like somewhat goofy sort of premise that can support that sort of thing and they do it pretty well i thought i i'm sorry bob i think you were gonna launch into something there Uh, i was just gonna make a goofy joke like I, you know point pleasant oh. has like uh th- this mothman festival and they got a mothman statue and all this shit mm-hmm. i can't wait for loveland which i'm i'm am fairly sure is not a real place to erect some sort of like frogman statue he's got a huge fucking boner and then you like rub the head of it and then you can get a shirt like at like the truck stop that says frogman like rimmed my ass from across the street or whatever the fuck I can't wait. Yes. I'm down, down for all that, <laughs> dude. I genuinely hope that they start a Frogman fest. Like it's, it's so it, like those are just like fun little things anyway. Like they're not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I love cryptid culture shit. I love people putting together like silly little like trinkets and whatever and selling them. I love like the flute and all that shit. It like when he plays the flute and all the frogs pop up. I just I cackled with delight. I was yeah. like, that's <laughs> so fucking stupid. Yeah, I love. Um, it. And oh, this man. is Loveland. It's Loveland, Ohio. It's oh. they actually have a Frogman. I know I'm stepping on trivia here, but oh really? Like you were unaware, but they do have. This is based off of the Loveland, Ohio frog. Dude, I did not. And, know well, that. fuck. Now I feel bad. It's a silly fucking cryptid. And they have like a fucking. <laughs> they have a festival. They do things like they sell yeah. all that. All that you just described. Yeah. Do they have the is, big old frog dick you can rub? No, I, well, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Not, there's, I there's, mean, you, you got to go to the back room for that. We can hope. <laughs> yeah, we can. So I t- or you can pitch it. You can pitch it. I, I'm I'm happy to pitch it. I so I pitch, pitch I, a ten. I, I, I tried to find some trivia <laughs> on this. I didn't find a shit. So if you got any more, Jim, I got zero. Feel free to you know roll with it, man. I guess we'll wait for the end because I had some questions about cryptid regional cryptids in general it might be fun but yeah that's all trivia is pretty bare bones on this but i remember i hear i heard the word the name loveland and i was like is that colorado because i know there's a loveland colorado and i just i put it in the fucking google cave and uh sure shit it came up loveland ohio and they do have a frogman and it's pretty similar to the George Hale character that they point out in the movie. So I guess it was a cop in the seventies that said he saw one go across his 
cruiser that was like four feet high. And then uh, someone else in like the eighties said something. And then his partner, the cop's partner in the nineties came out and said, yeah, the thing that the cop said he thought he saw, it was a fucking iguana that we found later. It was a mega iguana with no tail and kind of looked like a frog. And we fucking shot it and killed it. God, <laughs> damn. So that's, I'm not sure how many of those stories. To <laughs> We were afraid it was um, going to fuck us, so we killed yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we just a normal huge ass men. fucking erection and we had to just <laughs> put it out to pasture. We're just innocent men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. Oh, boy. Well, that's interesting. Fucking great. So there were no photos, I assume, like there was in this one. No, though. no George Hale photo. No, it was like, all. I love a good, like, roadside. It's like the. What do you. I forget what they're called, but like the. like the mermaid skeletons or whatever that they had at roadside stands and all this shit like that sort of thing. Yeah. I love that sort of bullshit. Like Fuck I yeah. want there to be frog frogman stuff like that. I hope there is. Yeah. There's a shitload of that. I love that. Like Americana, like American. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not specific to America. They got it everywhere, but like that Americana, like folklore, you know, they get yeah. passed that down like oral tradition and stuff. I, I mean, it's like every region, every state has, a quote-unquote cryptid you know like it's almost like you have a state bird or a state flower or something <laughs> it's like it's like a badge of honor for that that region you know yeah gotta one day we're gonna find that bat boy i swear <laughs> bat boy tossed my salad in 69 <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh yeah, I don't. I I don't know that I have anything else to say about this movie, there, boys. Do you have anything else before yeah. we end up uh, rating it? I'll just be rating it at that point. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I think. I, well, one thing you touched on the soundtrack, and I shared it on the Slack. Uh, I noticed in the soundtrack there's a band called Frog Lord <laughs> that did a bunch of tracks for this, and they have an absolute fucking banger on youtube it's frog lord it's called road raisin and they're self-described as like stoner sludge metal like psychedelic hell yeah um yeah what? it was there's the road raisin <laughs> is a great banger it's a very mastodon-esque damn um yeah <laughs> it's awesome that's hilarious they all wear frog masks and shit and like that's fucking the videos oh, are super cool yeah. yeah check them out I, I love a gimmicky a small gimmicky band me too there's there's this group that plays at all the like tiki events in the southeast called the disaster knots and they dress up as astronauts for like these orange jumpsuits and they have like chimpanzee masks that they wear and they don't talk they just play the music and then they like make weird chimp noises like it's <laughs> it's, just it's amazing well committing to the bit that's great i love yeah. that sort of thing like max sabbath is is a is a classic yeah. of course yeah Ma the mcdonald's themed black sabbath cover band max sabbath good shit classic. dude there's a band um, from northern california called the advantage and they do all covers of old nes songs like castlevania and shit and uh, okay. like batman and but they play them in this like really fast paced like heavy kind of punk like post punk style and it's fucking mm -hmm. awesome nice. i love shit like gimmicky stuff like that when it's Dude, done well i love that too and fucking aquabats are kings among men <laughs> cool let's go and rate this thing out of five yeah. <laughs> jim why don't you kick us off man how do you feel about frog mang fuck um, if you would have asked me nine hours ago, I would have given it like a 1.5, but being true to like the indie spirit and like, I appreciate what they were able to put together, especially the last act, I think saves it for me. The practical effects, the creature stuff. We didn't even talk about the dude, Scotty, the cameraman, his transformation into a fucking half frog man with the bubbling mm. skin. That was fucking probably the highlight for me. That was super awesome. Um, I'm going to mm -hmm. come in right down the fucking middle at 2.5 on this bad boy. Um, yeah. Two point. Five. Yeah. That was a great effect from Sorry. your boy, Jim, Randy. How do you feel out of five? Yeah. I mean, unsurprisingly, I'm a little more, uh, positive towards this. I, 
I don't know. Like I have a proclivity towards cryptid stuff and towards uh, found footage stuff. So this is this would it's fair to say this is up my alley, and that may be coloring my perspective a little bit. But yeah, I I just enjoyed this. I felt like it walked a pretty sheer line between comedy and horror. Um, it didn't always walk it perfectly. I felt like the relationships were a little forced feeling, um, but individual character performances I thought were good. The fucking effects were great. Uh, that what well, you described Scotty's transformation, like we didn't bring that up, but that was fucking killer. I thought that that shit ruled. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I like I liked a lot of the like the. It, there's so much lore in this movie that if you're not down for that sort of thing, it's it, it, that you're not going to enjoy it. But I really loved all the lore building or whatever. Like it just, it was a maybe a little too much. But like they didn't, they could have lingered a little more on certain things. But man, like they got fucking magic wands. They got sludge that turns you into a frog. They got maidens being taken for spores. They've got a cult. They've got a fucking storefront where a guy pretends to be Frogman for tips or whatever. Like it's just, it's I don't know. It's very very charming to me. I really enjoyed it, and uh, because of that, I also know though that it has some problems. Like the relationship doesn't work for me. Um the uh the lead dallas is like an unlikable protagonist so it can be a little bit harder to like you know root for the squad when he's running the show and calling the shots um but i think it it works to the film's ultimate benefit it just it, you have to get through some down times where you're just like god damn i wish this dude would stop being so fucking ridiculous about this and start like listening to the fact that this this small town cop just threatened your life not even to go to jail but just like threaten the shit out of you and you're like no i gotta find i gotta go to the next guy. like you're crazy you're out of your fucking mind you're putting your friends at risk for nothing but your ego i don't know there's some things i'm conflicted on but ultimately i just had a really really good time so i'm gonna give it a three flat i think it's a good good time a good movie and uh yeah enjoyed myself cool three from randy um i'm generally basically where you guys are at here. I think this movie would have been a perfect VHS short. Um, like if it was part of an anthology, I probably would have loved the shit out of it. It feels like maybe that was the case. And then they had to extend it a bit. And then just kind of, it feels like to me just kind of took the Blair Witch template for the first half of the movie and kind of copy pasted it. They do give you that sweet frog goodness, which the movie really, really needs. I mean, if you're going to make a found footage movie these days, I know there's there's we've got what 20 25 years since Blair Witch there's countless found footage movies you kind of you can't hide the witch you got to show the witch now and they do in this movie and I really appreciate that that's the best stuff of the movie um but yeah it's it just takes a while to get to it some of the comedy was I think a, a little a little lost on me um but I do after like talking about it, I've warmed to it a little bit. I think knowing that it's coming from this like stoner sludge, like intentionally comedic cryptid frog fucking corner of the earth. Like, I think that is just a bizarre place to come at a movie from. And I kind of dig it. So I don't know that I'm really going to change my score from where I had it at the beginning, but I've warmed to the movie a little bit. And I think you could definitely do worse for a found footage movie. You could do a lot worse actually. Um, so yeah, I'm going to come, yeah, sort of right down the middle. I'm, I'm, I'm right, right where uh, G baby's at with a 2.5 on this one. Um, yeah. Yay. There you go. Uh, All your right. boy, Justin did call in with his thoughts on this one. Uh, Ray, Randy, do you have that? Can you play that for us? I got it. Thank All you. right, here it goes. I'm going to do my best impression. Here it comes. <clears throat> what up, everyone? It's your boy, Soju, calling in this week. Sorry I couldn't be on the episode. Just got a couple things I got to take care of this week. I will be back next week, hopefully. Uh, but I did want to call in and give my thoughts on Frog Mang. Um, I have a bit of a soft spot for found footage films, as I'm sure Randy has also mentioned. Um he and I, you know, definitely both like found footage films more than Bob, for sure. And uh, this one kind of reminded me of Butterfly Kisses. Um, it definitely is a bit of a love letter to uh, a Blair Witch and, you know, stuff like that. The thing about this one is 
Being a new film in 2024, it's it almost leans too much into that Blair Witchness. It's like it's trying to recreate the magic, it feels like. And even though this movie is pretty thin, because I'm down with found footage, I was okay for most of it. And I liked some of the choices that they made. Um, you know, the local cryptid, the lore behind it. That was fun visiting these, you know, really cheesy touristy places that just like sell this like ridiculous merch and stuff. Like I, I was down for all of that, but I mean, it is a lot of them just like wandering through a town or like talking to people. And I think one of the biggest negatives of this film is that the acting's just not that good. Um, and not in the way that like Blair Witch kind of feels more natural. Um, it just, it, it's, they're trying too hard sometimes to kind of like sell this aspect and they're just not particularly good at it, unfortunately, um, which is still kind of easy to get past. I mean, they're still a, you know, a little bit endearing. Um, I don't, I think also too, the main guy is like so unlikable, but his friends are endearing and their kind of friendship within itself is endearing he he kind of sucks um and i don't you know want to like root for him or anything like that but um but yeah anyways the, the acting is just not that good and then also too i feel like they just they really kind of set it up okay but they lean too hard into the goofiness, I guess. I don't know, man. This thing, once they do the reveal, it's it doesn't look good. And the wand aspect is just like kind of dumb. I mean, it really, because they kind of play it straight. You know, they're not being silly with this. And I think that they just didn't really know how to pull it off in the way that the Blair Witch was able to pull it off. And that's one thing that I liked about um, Butterfly Kisses, too, is is they kind of had like a unique spin on it where they're questioning this guy, where, you know, in the Blair Witch, you're questioning, like, is it true? Is it false? And then they're able to, like, set up these, like, really simple things to, to spook you and to scare you um, and things in the shadows. And then with, you know, Butterfly Kisses, it was questioning this guy is this guy legit but in this movie i mean they just kind of lay it all out there and i don't know there's nothing to really question and what they give you is not really satisfying and like the text at the end is just really kind of cheesy honestly and i don't know what they're kind of going for once this is all said and done i i don't really know what they're trying to achieve i can't say like this is exactly the tone they're going for they're trying to be silly or they're just they're trying to make a love letter to the blair witch because if it's just a love letter to the blair witch well then i think they kind of fumbled the ball because they set it up well but then like the the way that they handle the actual frogman and, and the wand and stuff like that is is kind of dumb. But if they're trying to be spoofing off that or cheesy with it, well, then I don't think they achieve that either because a majority of the film is played pretty straight. And then there's some aspects of it, like the friend getting kind of melted away or you know whatever's happening to him transformation or whatever is is disturbing so i mean i i don't think that they really landed on either side of that and i don't think the two come together well um i did like the aspect of the town actually worshiping the creature that's cool i thought that that was like a cool spin on it um but i also thought that that wasn't explored as far as i wanted them to it didn't necessarily feel rewarding it was intriguing and a, a good choice but ultimately not very rewarding in the end um i kind of would have maybe enjoyed a little bit more of that um and yeah i mean i don't know there's not too much to this film honestly it's pretty thin and um hard to watch it sometimes just based on the nature of the filming and stuff they really lean into it it also does have that problem of 
there are times where they are, they're recording and they shouldn't be recording. Um, the, the beginning of this film is a little choppy setting the stuff up. It's, it's got some eye roll moments of even them kind of like getting back together, showing up at the party, some awkward moments and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, but even then, like, because I like found footage, for the most part, I, I wasn't feeling this movie drag, even though I looked at one point and it was 50 minutes in, but I didn't feel like it had been 50 minutes. It kind of went by quickly, honestly, um, which is usually like, it's kind of like the opposite problem that I usually have with movies I don't really care for. So, um, yeah, th- I don't know. This movie was okay. It moved fine a little hard to watch ultimately kind of like fumbled where it went but um a decent found footage film for this year i just i think they need to do something a little bit more different something a little bit more original acting was lackluster uh, but the story was okay it was okay so ultimately i think i will give this one a 2.5 that's a great That'll impersonation do it. you did there, Randy. I know. That was amazing. I've been working just on like it. him. Killing Man. it. Something it's not a marketable impersonation, but there you go. Listening to like Justin talk about this movie and like looking at both of your like AI generated backgrounds, like the <laughs> like putting it all together, it made me kind of realize like this movie is the the 80 minute feature length version of a black light Spencer's gifts poster. You know what I'm saying? Like (laughs) that's just like what this, what the vibe of this movie is. I think, uh, I don't know. It's not, it's not faux, um, uh, trippy enough for that maybe, but (laughs) yeah, I think that's sort of like where it's coming from. Maybe not what's on the screen, but that's like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm projecting that. That's that's what it feels like anyway. It's so funny that like Justin thought this movie was played straight. I could not like there were things that were played straight about it, but I just yeah, like the movie just inherently felt silly to me from the jump. So I don't know. Like, the, the whole premise is fucking silly. The fucking wand is silly. It makes me laugh. Dude, the wand was <laughs> I loved that when he snatched the fucking wand and fucking got his friend out and was like, boom, I cast fuck you. Like that. <laughs> oh man, that really got me. Because I thought that was cool. It's like most creature features, that fucking mm-hmm. end game, that end boss is like you can't fuck with them. You like you're at their mercy, and for him to like come up and like snatch that thing and fucking <laughs> yeah, belly almost that dude. Like that was fucking sick. It's like somebody I punching like, big di- Bigfoot in the dick to get away. Yeah. You're like it's fucking stupid. Like it's nothing I've ever punched before. Like they, <laughs> if they do make a second one, I will watch it because they've laid the groundwork, and I want to. I'd I'd like to see what the fucking wand does and like like a confrontation with Frogman like. So see, yeah, I'll that's where that. we differ. Cause like, to me, like, I kind of feel like the, the, the wand at the end, like the, that it ends up in his hands or whatever. Like I just, I didn't really love that part of it. I thought that that was like trying <laughs> too, too hard MCU to like add a spin you. at the end. <laughs> but like, if they make a sequel, the thing is like, without that, they have a perfect sequel built in because the sister watched him drive off, you know, and come back. Like I, f- I feel like she's got some shit deal deal. like they didn't explore that they set it up but they never explored it and it felt like they were gonna do something with that maybe in another installment which i would also watch that yeah that's a good point because the little bit that she was in she was pretty strong like i felt like like selling Mm -hmm. it she still had some lingering trauma from that or wanted to like and was trying to ignore it it. yeah exactly Mm -hmm. yeah totally with uh with juices 2.5 that puts our aggregate at a 2.6 um and as is usual whenever you guys pick a flick for us to review on the show we do encourage you to send over a voicemail or an email with your own thoughts and rating your boy Brandon sent over a voicemail let's go ahead and see what he has to say about the frog mang what a show boy Um, calling in about my Frogman pick for the week for my new pick. Um, yeah, I picked this movie because it, uh, I checked it out and it, I found it had a, a lot of heart. It was, uh, 
definitely not a perfect movie. Um, but, but I really liked the heart behind it. I could tell that they just were loving what they were doing. Um, the being in the movie, I feel like takes a long time to get going. Um, characters are a bit insufferable at points, but, but overall I really, I really enjoyed it. And then once Frogman comes in and it's like, fucking, there's a fucking cult. There's a frogman with a wand. And oh shit, that dude's turning into a frog. And it goes buck wild, and I was here for that. So I had a really good time with this movie. Um, I would give it a three out of five. So, yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching my flick. And I'll catch you boys on the celebrity. Well, that was our sober friend <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> he was not above the influence. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh. Love it. That was great. I, I want to know what heart he saw in this because I don't know that I would characterize it quite that way, but that's hilarious to me. The I way I'm gonna I'm gonna do some gymnastics for him, and I think the heart aspect is like filmmakers doing what they love yeah. and like that okay, part of yeah. it I got Maybe. and I dug like the practical like yeah the wand was fucking like as the actual but, filmmakers not the in universe right. filmmakers yes okay, like the, yeah. the people yeah. making the film like and god mm -hmm. I know how hard that is and I'm sure their budget was fucking slim as shit on this so yeah. I, f I think for what they were able to put out was great uh, but I don't want to go full Stuckman and like fucking be like, and not say anything <laughs> bad about it. But you know, there's some things and he, I, I like, he even to catches it too, a lot of know? strays on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I mean, he copped to it too. You know, it's a little long. He did, some yeah. of the, the performances are a little cheese ball, but you know, from, from like, like an artist perspective, the people putting it out, like I'd like them to see, to do more, you know, yeah. like respect to see more out of them. Sure, so. yeah. I respect oh. it for sure. I did. I watched it. There's a couple shorts. Um, he, uh, the dude, Anthony cousins, the director of this movie has made quite a few shorts. There's a couple on his YouTube channel that I watched. One of them is called every time we meet for ice cream, your whole fucking face explodes. <laughs> it's the name of the short. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've heard of that. <laughs> that's a criterion, isn't it? <laughs> and there is there's there's another one that's like really short. It's like only two minutes long, and it's called the the Grim Witch Project. I think is what it's called, and it's like it's a found footage thing, definitely riffing off Blair Witch. And these like three friends go to McDonald's. They make a McDonald's run in the middle of the night, and they get this new like Fourth of July milkshake that's like purple, and I guess it's something to do with the character of Grimace. And they drink the shakes, and then in the middle of the night, they start like puking their guts out and like transforming into like humanoid grimaces. It's like mm -hmm. it's kind of awesome. Well, that was a whole thing. The Grimace shake was like yeah. like a, a meme thing. Oh, yeah. really? Know that? Okay. Yeah, it was like the clowns. 2015 when the clown sacks yeah, were everywhere yeah. it was oh, like one of those shit. Okay. everybody was doing like shorts and stuff yeah. like like doing tiktoks about oh i tried the grimace shake and then they freak out or what i don't know it was a whole thing gotcha yeah. okay. so i think that I that's what that. that is okay interesting so anyway yeah mm -hmm. I, I i dig what this guy's about generally and would watch whatever he does again yeah so no no shade on the filmmaker um yeah Cool. Thanks for the pick, Brandon. And it seems like we're mostly on the same page, honestly, about this one. And I don't know that I would have watched it if it hadn't been chosen by your boy, Brandon. So add a new release yeah. to the list. Solid. Cool. Awesome. Um, Randeezy, let's talk about our Rotten Tomatoes. Let's get rotten. Certified. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rotten Tomatoes segment in which I'm going to have these gentlemen guess within the best of their abilities what the aggregate positive score is on RottenTomatoes.com for the film Frogman. We're going to start with the critic score, then move on to the audience score. And this is a, a new release and a kind of a small release. So you can, as you can imagine, not a lot of reviews here. The critical release has only eight reviews tallied, just eight. 
So keep that in mind as you're doing your calculations here. Um, I'll let our esteemed guest to take over here. Jim, what do you think the um, the critical response was to this film? And what percentage of those reviews, those eight reviews, would you call positive? Esteemed is a strong word, but I will go <laughs> with critics. I'll go with the comedy number. Give me, give me 69 dudes. I'll, I'll give you 69 dudes. 69 dudes! Buy me a dinner first, huh? <laughs> Not a chance. Bob, how about you? I'll give you 69 frogs, buddy. Uh, I'm going to go with the under on this. I don't see this being uh, really praised too heavily by critics. So I'll go down the middle with a 50, kind of like what we were thinking. 50%. All right. 50%. So we got 50% and we got 69%. Let me see. Quick math. So this is almost 20 points away from the correct answer. I... Damn. I'm 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 so like I feel like if I was in your shoes I'd be like I can't tell which way it's going to go. Yeah. 29 points away from the correct percentage points which was 88%. Oh, this damn. movie is Shit. not certified because there's too few. But it's a certified number typically it's fresh. speaking. Give me a hell yeet. <laughs> I damn <am> going... it. <laughs> Fuck. We got to give you that eat, my friend. There you go. Well done. Um, I'm going to jump over to the uh, audience review. And this also has a limited number here. Fewer than 50 verified audience ratings counted. So I don't know what number that is. Fewer than 50. That's what we know. Uh, go in reverse order. Bob, out of those under 50 reviews, what do you think the aggregate score is? I still think it's going to be closer to the middle that's crazy high for the critics you just blew my mind in half <laughs> so i'll go a little higher uh, but not like crazy i'll just take a i'll take a 60 i guess 60 all right uh jim how about you in honor of soju i guess both ways one i want to get the hell you sweep for him but i can't pull away from the irresistible urge to go with the boys 86 project <laughs> give it to me oh my god 86 it is Oof. i've used every reference i can remember from that band <laughs> i already in did previous too. Episodes, I went so. spy hunter off the top of the dome <laughs> spy there okay yeah that's yeah i don't have enough memory for that um all right well that's that's a very gutsy gutsy number to choose for this um Let's see. The correct answer is again, a 29 exactly percentage points away from the correct answer. It got a That's crazy. got 106. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a... F Bob, you should have gone with the original instincts. This is a direct 50% right uh, down the middle audience score. 50% I kind of wanted Jim to win, if I'm being honest. I, was just, <laughs> I wanted to... Oh, yeah. The that's hell this way. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to switch seats? <laughs> um, we got the yeet and skeet, which is reverse. Hey, but, you know, that's something. I'll take it. Oh, man. We're all, all right. <laughs> I'm going to read the negative review blurb that oh, is on boy. Rotten Tomatoes. And I don't know. Here we go. Frogman ultimately feels like an interesting premise that falls into the swamp of found footage gimmicks. Not funny enough. Not the funny. Swamp. This review did not succeed at being funny, which was a clearly every review's goal. Dude, real quick, I didn't I'm not gonna rattle off a negative review. I saw one subject line for a negative review review and it was fraud man, and that gave me a <laughs> chuckle. So wow. wow. <laughs> I'd I'd watch that found footage film. It's a movie about it's a found footage film about a guy faking a bunch of cryptid sightings and yeah. uh eventually stumbling upon the real thing by accident it's just, just hard great. match stick men it's yeah that, i was footage. gonna say catch go hard into catch me if you can but yeah yeah <laughs> i can't get yeah let's get to caprio on this one um <laughs> all right yeah that's really all there is there's just not much to go off of on this rotten tomatoes uh thing here there's just not much on here so i know that there's not much trivia either so bob what's next yeah there's pretty much no trivia that i could find so let's go ahead and jump into our cooter of the week straight chilling cooter, cooter of the week. Of the week. 
Jim, what's a cooter and why do we hunt them? Boys, let's go hunting. Uh, cooter's <laughs> character type and a straight chilling exclusive. A cooter has to hit at least three of these five points to be considered a cooter. We want the cooter with the most points. Five points of cooter dumb are sexual deviance, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall looking attire, and overall patheticness. Boys, who's our cooter this week? Dude. Ah, uh, yes. I see that you know your judo well. The job is yours. Well done. You got it. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, yeah. All um, earnest hom- homage to uh, our boy Juice. <laughs> Frogmang. Cooter of the week? Question Frogman. mark. I mean, he's up Okay, there. sure. You want to start with the frogman? Yeah. Um, manipulation. Sexual deviance is at the sexual top. Sexual deviance. I don't know. Manipulation. Yeah. We're just normal men. <laughs> wow. Sexual deviance. Um, he is I'm, putting little tadpoles in a bunch of, you know, women that aren't consenting. That's for who sure. Who among us hasn't, Dude, hasn't he's wanted in the buff, to lay some tadpoles? Attire. <laughs> he is looking Ugh. kind of rough. He's just, out, he's just out there hanging dong, so <laughs> he don't got clothes on. There's three right there. Yeah. That's I, true. You know he's smug. I don't know. He's a frogman. Fuck. He's a frogman. Like you know, that's oh, yeah. how they that's how they roll. You know he's he's smug. got a harem of humans that he's fucking. I don't know if it's fair to hold looking attire of a frogman <laughs> to human standards. I don't think that it's quite fair. I think for a frogman, he's doing quite well for himself. <laughs> well, he's he's what a picture. I'm like Hefner with like a smoking jacket on, like <laughs> and just naked. Besides, I that. mean, frog and toad. I guess they they wear nice uh, turn of the century caps and and vests and shit. So he he could be wearing nicer things. Yeah, that's true. when in the willows, dude. Toad was fucking. Mm-hmm. He was fucking dapper. Up. <laughs> yeah, Mister Toad. I mean, even when he's traveling through hell, he's dressed in his vest <laughs> and his coattails. So three piece. All right, suit. I'm convinced. Sure. Manipulation, uh, smug arrogance, so, sexual deviance, look and attire, patheticness. I mean, I don't, I don't know, know if he hits on that point. I mean, he's just he, kind of running train on this whole town. He's got a whole bunch of like victims, like treating him like a god. So he gets his wants uh, I don't snatched know of it. like a little bitch. That's <laughs> true. He does kind of get punked on his wand. Um, yeah, little bitch I man is what I should have called it. Bob. <laughs> It's not that kind of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm just at, least, pause it. at least four out of five, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe all five. The, the only other one I was going to pause it was uh, the guy at the top, the YouTube man, Jeremy J. <laughs> Raisin <laughs> skirts and IQs on a new oh episode of Monster God. Soup. <laughs> That's a hell of a line. Immediately. Oh man! Sexual deviance and smug yeah. arrogance. That's enough. And we're just innocent, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what that's from. I've seen that clip of the little. It's everywhere now. The Yeah, it's some British show. Dude, that thing, mm-hmm. that kills me every time. Mainly that's just great. the gal interviewing him, breaking character. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's great. Um, it's unbelievable. But yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I think uh, I kind of feel like um, Dallas is a little bit of a cooter uh, yeah. myself. Pathetic. Let's just say yes. Yeah. Yes to that. Faux show. Um manipulative. Yeah, maybe, maybe a, a little, little bit. bit. Like yeah. the way he goes about recruiting is fairly manipulative. Not capably manipulative, but manipulative a little bit. Um looking at tires fine. Uh sexual deviance. He I don't think did so. step out on a girlfriend, but he cheats, I don't but know. you know. <laughs> He's a cheater, so he's a he's a man. Am I right, fellas? Come on, <laughs> boys will be boys. Dash, just dash a normal your man. spilled milk. God, we're just normal damn. men. I can't. Okay, this this bump's gonna get overdone in one episode. <laughs> yeah, he, um, it's already time for t- retirement on that. Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't think he's gonna be frog man. I think frog frogman's the one. Yeah, bi- I bitch think he's man. The, yeah, but they can the strongest. Yeah, they Dallas can have a plea deal together or something. Cooter, cooter light, maybe. But the Jeremy J guy also had orange tinted fucking shooting glasses indoors. God damn! Well then, he, okay. well, then he's a murderer. Rings. Okay, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. So pathetic. Open up a can of with ass. Pathetic sexual deviance, smug arrogance, looking at tire for Jeremy J. And we only get like fifteen seconds of them, maybe. Yeah. Like it's that's if you that's got thirty testament. seconds, it would be over. Yeah. It would be over. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's a good point, Jim. That's yeah. I feel good yeah, about for, it. In terms of, of cooter points in a very f- cooter points per yeah. capita, he's a very efficient cooter. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, he's off the charts. Well, he's and he's a YouTuber, so instantly his whole bullshit <laughs> dropped too. Oh my god, bullshit, bullshit, ba, 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 bullshit. love it. Womp, 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 womp. Yep. Jesus, good shit. Christ. <laughs> Oh. That was a ripper. <laughs> Someone's got to change oh, their draws. Got to burn those. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we got a few. I think this movie might be lousy with cooters. Book them, boys. Book them. We got them. We got them all. Well, Bob, what do we got? What Next? do we What's got? Um, y'all been watching anything recently? Is there uh I got... You got some shit got to talk about. a little about. something. Let's, okay, Very little. Let, 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 let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. All right. Hey, gang. What, what you been, been watching? watching? Jim, why don't you kick us off, man? What you been watching? Uh, Fuck. Not a lot. Uh, just watched Long Legs. That's probably the most recent horror thing I've seen besides Frogman, actually. Um, I have dipped in. I saw old Naderade on the Slack was... Uh, asking for uh unsolved mysteries rex so that's something i watch pretty regularly so i dipped into that and uh a little bit of factor fiction with jonathan frakes those are always uh good standbys Total fiction. Um, season one episode 21 on lost dutchman mine is a fucking banger unsolved mysteries episode they're all on youtube um yeah that's about it for me Solid Rex nice. hooking your boy up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy, what you been watching? Uh, just a couple things. For one, I'm just going to mention briefly because I always do mention my my Zelda exploits. There's a new Zelda trailer that came out for a new Zelda game that looks fucking great. It looks great like they all look great. I'm very excited to play this game. It's in the style of the Link's Awakening remaster, but it has game mechanics not too dissimilar from fucking Tears of the Kingdom of all things. It's crazy. Um. So there's that. I also watched a pilot for YouTube on YouTube. There, they posted a few pilots for Adult Swim. One called Eggland, which is a joint project between Connor O'Malley and fuck, I forgot the the animator's name, but like he he's working alongside this animator that he uses that in comedian, I guess that the, they work together a lot basically, and they have this pilot where it's called it's called Eggland. It's about two like elderly retirees and the way that it's animated and this it's animated like it's three-dimensional but it's like weirdly grotesque and strange and i don't know what they're going for and it's kind of fascinating for that i don't know that i'm excited to watch more but it is a unique experience um very strange shit i don't even know how to describe it really it's just it's it's just very fucking weird what's that Um, eggman's what eggland Egg Sorry, land. Eglin's Best is the name of the retirement community that this couple lives in, and I do believe that's also the brand a brand of yeah uh, the actual egg eggs. substitute or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the sodium free egg I'm substitute getting. or some shit. <laughs> it's fucking weird. There's a lot of like very very like in the mouth shots of eating. It's fucking yeah. gross and strange, mm. and they're just like insufferable characters. It's it's weird, man. It's very weird. Um, and then last but not least, um, I did finally get a chance to watch another found footage feature that just came out. Horror in the High Desert 3, Firewatch, which oh, um, I had uh, had some thoughts on. And I'm, I'm toying with making it a mini episode, so I don't want to go too deep on it nice. on the Patreon. But, um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed myself. It has some, it has some problems, but it definitely i think it delivers on the thing that those movies have consistently delivered on which is a pretty fucking rock solid found footage final act um yeah did I'll you like it, it better than the second one minerva i did like it better than the second one okay cool 
cool. Um, I was not the second one definitely fell pretty flat for me, but yeah. I don't know how much of that is because I was more prepared for the, some of the stuff that comes with um, as, as things progressed or if it just truly got back to form. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure yet. So, nice. but I enjoyed it. That's on uh, Amazon prime. Like I said, it's a third, it's the third entry in, in the series. The first one was surprisingly good to me. And so I can't remember who recommended it. Was it, was it you, Jim, or maybe it was, it was Black Brandon. Star Dahlia? Had oh, maybe it was Dahlia. Brought yeah, it up, that, that sounds yeah, right. I watched one and two back to back, so maybe that that recency of like enjoying the first one and going in the second kind of fell flat a little bit. But then I saw like mm-hmm. Bloody Disgusting put out uh, the third one was coming out, and I was like, oh shit, I gotta watch that. Yeah, just because on the juice of that first one, I fucking really dug it a lot. Yeah, man, there's a lot to say about and p- positive about that first one in particular. So, anyway, I, again, trying trying to hold back some thoughts for for behind the paywall, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's it Maybe for me. Uh, Bob, you you got anything you've been yeah. watching recently? A few, a few things. Nothing too crazy. Uh, we wrapped up season two of Yellow Jackets this week, and still mm. still been enjoying that pretty good. Elijah Wood is an addition in season two, and he's like a really nice bit of levity to what turns out to be such a fucking bummer of a season. <laughs> um, it, it's uh, why it's, is it doing? It's a step down from the first season, but I think it's still pretty solid, and it ends in a satisfying way, but in like such a bummer. It's just such a bummer, man. Good lord. Um, <laughs> I recommend it though. It's good. Looking forward to season three. I also revisited The Ring 2. Ooh. And mm. that is just a piece of shit right there. Woof. It is <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> I and, don't yeah. recommend that. Don't watch it. Just that's don't. a movie. That's a movie that I saw in theaters and was like like we were of the perfect age to enjoy The Ring like so much uncritically but like embrace it wholeheartedly watching it at sleepovers just loved it and not long after they forced that sequel out and even then even with all that steam behind it i was like this movie stuff oh yeah it's <laughs> terrible uh yeah yeah don't watch it um i also <laughs> revisited vegas vacation Spicy. because Ooh, did you now? Uh, it's an incredible film and i i don't know when summertime rolls around i just want to watch it so i did and it's great it's still good. You need a bodyguard? Uh, I die for you. I die for you. <laughs> That's how I felt when you guys asked me on the show. I'm like, I'm Randy <laughs> Quaid right now. That's Wayne that is in- Newton. <laughs> that sounds like very vital information for me to know for the future. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. Offering that Randy, up. Randy, I die for you. Ooh, hold on to that one. That's where I sold my kidney. Damn. <laughs> Dude, the fucking chicken... Grilling chicken on the rocks. I'll never oh, get over so that good. shit. God, Ethan Embry is so great in that movie, too. He gets the Papa shit. Giorgio ass. Oh, my God. It's so good. That movie's so good. And and car. Also, and it's car. terrible. It's, it's amazing. The buffet scene is the highlight. I love it, dude. I Give really feel, yell. especially now being older and having kids, when he's like, what about an alone day? God, think about that <laughs> too much, probably. <laughs> the way he says that is kind of, yeah, yeah, like I could see stimming off of the way he says that shit. Just like, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> Las so. Vegas was built off guys like you that come here and blow the family nest egg. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Oh, it's incredible. Watch Vegas Vacation. Do it. Uh, that's pretty much it, though. <laughs> nothing nothing too crazy um we don't have any voicemails this week if you guys are listening would like to call in and leave a voicemail for uh next week's show hit us up at 904-638-3231 you guys got any prompts you want to throw out there for next week's show oh i guess that depends on what it is but <laughs> well we're watching Alien Resurrection from 1997 oh the yes good one. is that a miles pick no, we just, it's the only oh. alien movie we haven't covered, and we yeah. just decided, oh, decided to get it in before Romulus drops. Fucking organic. I yeah. dig it. 
Yeah, just do it. In mm-hmm. the movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to ask about that movie because I have not seen it. So, um, I don't know. Who's you got a hot re- take on? No. You haven't seen Resurrection? No, I like. I was very much a latecomer to the Alien franchise in general. So you're in for a treat, maybe. Am I? <laughs> maybe <laughs> we we watched. I'm it last aware night. of reputations. It is weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, it's, it's a very weird. One. One. Weird. It's a weird one. Like, I'm gonna assume you mean like David Lynch weird. Um, Nailed it. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> it should. Yeah. It should be that's, a. That's fun what I. That's what I'm gonna go in expecting it. Yeah, this should be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, great. I don't know. Call in uh, with your alien hot takes. Do you, does alien resurrection fuck? I know some folks out there really do dig it. I don't know. I, I mean, fucking love it. Nice. Okay. That's a genuine love or that's not an ironic genuine. love? Genuine. It's, it's cheese, right. but it's good cheese, man. <laughs> it's like a smoked Gouda. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Dude, mm, or a, some smoked, of that. a smoked provolone. <laughs> Ooh. Apple oh smoke. Oh my God. It's like those... It's like those beautiful craft singles. Mm. Mm. Ah. Mm. Get out of here with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I, dude, I, I'm not going to say anything because I'll go into a tirade about it, but uh, I got a two prong prompt. Uh, yeah, what's your favorite alien movie in the franchise, in the whole franchise? And then uh, do you have any, re- like where you're from, do you have any regional, like folklore? Oh, content? yeah. That's my boy. That's a great question. That is a good one. If there's another frogman type deal out there, I guess the, the thing is like so many of those are just like Bigfoot, but not called Bigfoot. Like 99% of them tend to be just like a variation on the, the Bigfoot. Florida mm-hmm. skunk ape. Yeah. The Florida skunk ape being the first one I think of, but like there's a million of them. And yeah. uh, I love a good, truly original one, like the Flatwoods monster, or the Jersey devil, or like the, those guys, they're classics because they, they stand out. Bigfoot's just like he's the Frankenstein's monster of cryptids. Yeah. It's like it's too too easy. He's the, he's the fucking archetype. Mm-hmm. In lieu of uh, trivia, because I know we brushed on that you didn't have any. I had question. It sounded like you answered it partly about. Do you guys have any like regional folklore, like cryptids native to Florida or anywhere else you've been in the U.S. that you're aware of? Sounds like Florida skunk apes one. I've I've heard that too, like in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the, um, the skunk ape is the big one. There's another one that's like very very local, and it's definitely just a dude who used to wear a suit. <laughs> but it's kind of like a Bigfoot type situation. But it's called the Barden Bo- Booger. B a r. I have not heard of that at all. B o o g e r. The Barden that's, Booger. Yeah. But that's it's not kinda, one I'm particularly familiar with. It looks kind of like a skunk ape. Like, I don't know this. I mean, this is just literally a picture of a dude in a suit. I don't know if they're trying to pretend this this is real or not, but like it uh, it doesn't. I don't know if you can see my phone, but it's like not convincing. Uh, <laughs> that looks I'm like convinced. a chimpanzee with a cowboy hat on. Yeah. That's yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> So that's that's what I know of, anyways. <laughs> I, I don't know too many around here. Like the uh, the only one that I have heard of, and I just I still don't know much about, is called the Snallygaster, which is some sort of like three headed lizard sort of deal, three headed dragon sort of thing. That's, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about it though. If I'm being perfectly honest, that's like a mid the only cryptid. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's uh, uh Maryland. I want to say specifically. Well, this one's saying it's in the District of Columbia, so I don't, I don't know. I've not run across a Snallygaster myself, but yeah. And the only other thing I can think of, this is not even really a, I don't know. I, I, I can't call that a cryptid. It's really more of an urban legend sort of thing. But there's a, a, um, a phone number you can call in Jacksonville where you could listen to the Whistling Pickle. Do you, remember, you know that one, Bob? Yeah, because of you. Only because of you. Yeah. I think I read about it in some like, some folio weekly article or something like that. Uh, but there, it's just like a random number you would call them, like, especially with kids in the nineties and it's, they think it was like a test co- test number for the phone company or something, but it just did like, this like whistling sound and that's it. That's, that's the whole thing. Huh? I have no idea how pickles got involved. <laughs> there Weird. is this story about, 
a sphere this dude who like in the 70s i think oh that's right who got yeah. this this like big silver sphere that is supposedly like alien in origin and they did all kinds of like crazy research about it and there were like aspects of it that they couldn't explain um and if you want if you want to take like a deep dive down the story of this sphere there was a um our our local um NPR affiliate put out a podcast. It's like a multi episode podcast a couple years ago where they talk about it and it's just called Oddball. So you can check that out if you want to go on a deep dive. Boy. There's a there's a taco restaurant that's haunted because it used to be like an inn and it's like super old. Apparently it's haunted as fuck. Uh I did not know that. School four is supposed to be haunted. It's like this old ass half burnt down um it's school. The, the location of every first photo project uh of every school in the region. Guilty. Yeah. It's easy you to break, break into in and, and there's take, lots of graffiti and yeah. spookiness. Yeah. Uh what's uh Rainy, what's the name of that town that's like just south? I always can, I can never remember. Uh, uh, Casadega? Casadega. Yeah, thanks. Um it's a it's a it's a town of like witches basically. Oh shit. And they um I get or like medians or I don't know what they would prefer to be called, but it's it's just south of Jacksonville, just north of Orlando. Um uh, you pass it going oh, yeah. going down 90 I95 and it's just full of spiritualists maybe that's the best catch-all type word and um yeah they they do like uh, festivals for halloween and stuff and you can go and like get your tarot cards read and your palms read and like it's very very like spooky haunted place filled filled with folks that like practice various religions and stuff i've not been yet but i'm curious about it bright eyes wrote like a an album titled casadega about it Mm. so yeah it seems like an interesting town but i haven't actually been yet so you, you know go. this is one that i forgot about from when i was doing uh uh inktober and i was doing like an urban legend a local urban legend i think was the prompt and i looked this up i, I was just looking up on the on the web to see if there's anything i'd forgotten from from jacksonville and there's ghost light road um which is uh somewhere on the north side i want to say um, but basically it's like, it's, it's ghost lights on the road. There's like an accompanying story about a, uh, motorcyclist, something like that. Very, like very doo-wop songy in, in, in yeah. nature. It seems like, <laughs> but, uh, that was one that we I only sing eighties. Joel, <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a good Joel. Jim, that's, that's one of my favorite Joel's. Do you have any, uh, that you know of Jim? Yeah, I had a couple queued up, but I was also curious because you guys are in the the Florida area, and it was pretty far south of you guys. But is Coral Castle jump off to you guys at all? As like a statewide thing, have you guys ever heard of that? No, I don't think so. Okay, it's kind of a rabbit hole, but like it's like I think the crux, the five second sound bite, is like this dude like castle out of this crazy limestone and he like levitated it to a different area and it's a it's a physical place that you can actually go and fucking visit so yeah i'll just throw that out there coral castle i didn't cool. know if that was i know that's like that's like the southernmost it's like towards miami um i know that's oh, a yeah. big state but yeah coral castle is one like people that are into like high strangeness shit that should jump off to you but um for me uh I've lived in California and now I live in Indiana. So one local to here is called the beast of Busco. Uh, it's based in a town. That's like 15 miles Northwest as the crow flies of me in Fort Wayne in a town called Cherubusco, Indiana, I guess in the forties, these, uh, this gal and guy in the forties saw a said they sighted like a 500 pound tortoise and they tried to go find it and they lost sight of it. I don't know how you lose sight of a fucking 500 pound tortoise, but it went so far as the dude like drained a fucking like, like reservoir and like fucked up a dam in pursuit of this thing. But they have like turtle days and they have like a big statue in the center of town. They have like 
it's called the beast of busco is like the the cryptid name for it um just a giant ass cooter turtle um <laughs> uh and then uh northern california lore where i'm from uh originally a lot of people don't know like that patterson gimlin footage of the bigfoot like the stock that you picture of him like traipsing across like a creek that was actually in california uh and it's like i guess for people hyper local to that region it's like halfway between crescent city and arcata like humboldt the emerald triangle of weed production um that was in the 60s that was that's where that was supposedly quote unquote filmed um that we also have um tessie in lake tahoe which is the uh cognate to nessie the like nos the, the Loch Ness monster. It's like a big fucking sea monster that people have said they've seen in, in Lake Tahoe. Um, and then there's the Fresno night crawlers, uh, these little alien guys, but yeah, that's, there's actually a bunch in California, but those are like the top ones that, uh, that I've made note of. Definitely heard of the night crawlers. Damn. Yeah. There's like yeah. some old CCT TV footage of them traipsing across and they're fucking, it's pretty weird, man really weird it's like they have yeah. no body and it's like the head and like legs down and they're just like traipsing across this guy's front lawn it's weird <laughs> that sounds fucked <laughs> up it looks weird man like it would if it was on my fucking ring camera i'd fucking be shitting <laughs> fresno nightcrawler check it out i gotta repost that ring camera footage that my in-laws got of what <laughs> sounds like the scariest goddamn ghosts of all time um mm, it's good shit God. oh shit I'm, I know I posted it before, but it, uh, you've seen it, right? It's, you remember it? It's fucked. Yeah, it is truly <laughs> like if I didn't know it came from like a source that would never know how to much less care to fake it. Uh -huh. I would say that it was just some Internet fakery or whatever, but it's like it is some spooky shit. Um, Damn. I don't want to describe it because the experience is too good. It's like a five. It's like a 10 second video or some shit. It's fucked. Yeah. Throw it in the slack again. I'll throw it on the slack. <laughs> Damn. We had a lot Sweet. of that was a lot. Yeah, that was more than I thought. Yeah, we, were we, just, we just filled up some time <laughs> there. Yeah, so you call in with your ghosties and your urban legends and your cryptids. Tell us, Fuck especially yeah. your cryptids. Yeah, let us know if you've seen anything spooky or if there's just any local legends. Hit us up at 904 638 3231. We'll be back next week. Like I said, we're, we're talking about Alien Resurrection from 1997. We're going to be rounding out the Alien franchise finally. Um, Jim, thanks so much for sitting in with us again, dude. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Fuck yeah. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, this was a, uh, awesome experience and it's a, an honor and a privilege to be gracing my favorite shows, uh, airwaves. So appreciate you fellas. Yeah, man. Yeah. You didn't even have to die That's for us. Hyper. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. That, that'll come at a later date. <laughs> I'll have some of the yellow. <laughs> I'm going to cash that chip in when I need it most. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, five star. All right. Movie. Cool. Yeah. Well, for you, you can find us on the socials. You know where they are. And until next time, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. Bro, you went according and he did ride on.